Uh, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure again to have you here with me on the 4th of February uh, to look at um, ideas about writing literature, books, and everything in between. Uh, it's been uh, a pleasure to be here with you week in, week out, and I'm glad that uh, I still have your company and your interest. Uh, today is a very special day, and I will come to that uh, shortly. Uh, but uh, just to say that uh, is uh, again another interesting day and we'll be looking at um, the day in history and looking a bit about literature and also looking about uh, the personalities that make this day uh, a remarkable day in history. So um, uh, today um, is the birthday of Facebook and Facebook is a platform from which I'm reaching, where I'm reaching you uh, on this day in 2004, seems like uh, uh, a long time ago, Facebook was born uh, after it was launched, uh, or was born uh, through the, um, of course, the um, actions of Mr. Zuckerberg and his friend Eduardo Severin and a host of other people. And uh, since that time, Facebook has, of course, become a global phenomenon, and it seems like our, our lives will have a little meaning or purpose for many people without Facebook. And of course, Facebook Live is where I'm reaching out to you today. So um, the ubiquitous um, um, span of Facebook cannot be uh, denied. But the question we're gonna be talking about today with um, a couple of my friends uh, is to ask the question, what has been the impact of Facebook on uh, literature and writing? Uh, at this point, I may want to thank Titi Lola Centeno. Uh, thank you for joining to watch us, me today and share your thoughts about this important topic. If you want to, please um, um, don't be um, uh, too uh, far away to make your comments about this important topic. Amani Akinja, uh, my big brother from um, Tanzania, thank you very much for uh, coming on today. And uh, I look forward to... Uh, uh, sharing my views with you, your views with us about this uh, ubiquitous Facebook and what you think is impact is hard on literature. But uh, before we go into that, let me just uh, um, mention some important uh, stuff about today in history. So today, I will just do some research. I found that today is the birthday anniversary of a guy called Johann Ludwig Bach. I first of all thought it was the uh, famous. Uh, um, Sebastian, John Sebastian Bach, uh, the composer, but of course they are cousins, uh, so the Ludwig Bach is a senior cousin, an older cousin of um, Sebastian Bach, and he also was a classical composer, and I thought, oh, why not uh, just uh, a, a bit of tidbits of his music, um, just to see what he'd uh, produced, but I never heard of him before until today. So it's a nice coincidence. Um, also, uh, today is the anniversary of the, of the birth of uh, the very great woman, Rosa Parks. And for those of us who know anything about uh, the African-American history, Rosa Parks was that woman who refused to give up a seat on the bus. Um, and that sparked off the American civil rights uh, uh, movement towards desegregation in America. And of course, uh, she passed away in she was born in 1916 and she passed away in 2005. So today is dedicated to the memory of Rosa Parks, whose story, of course, was affirmed again by the um, young poet Amanda Morgan at the inauguration of uh, uh, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. So that's the, the tidbit about today in history. And again, it's all about celebrating all the connection between history and literature and creativity and the formation of the human spirit. So that is that. Of course, uh, people are born, people die. And um, unfortunately, at this time last year, we were uh, remembering the death of um, Kirk Douglas, the uh, Hollywood actor, of course, the father of Michael Douglas. He passed away um, last year at the, I think he was, uh, must have been the ripe old age. Uh, he was born in 1916, 94 years old or 104 years old. I can't figure it out, but he was uh, 
grand old man when he passed away last year um, on the 4th of February. So that is so much about the uh, topical th issues we have to kind of highlight the date. So <clears throat> on the page, uh, of course, I did put up some information about books. So I have, um, so I had, they came across this book, which, um, I hope I haven't messed up my screen so I can actually talk sensibly about what I was um, doing before, um, which is uh, uh, a book that, um, just a new book by a new writer, by her name is, um, I think, Chris, uh, let me see. Um, it's a book called How My How My One Armed Sister Sweeps the Floor, something like that. So, um, I'm trying to figure out back could get back on my page where I was on my computer. I think I've made a mistake somewhere, but um, I'm sure I'll figure it out. So, um, so let me see how it goes if I can get that done. Um, but in the meantime. What I will do is that uh, I did mention about the music of uh, the back cousins and while I'm waiting to set up my page again, I will just uh, give you a little bit of the younger um, back uh, and it's one of the very, very popular and really very, quite soothing uh, compositions of uh, Sebastian Bach, which is called uh, Jesu joy of man's desiring. So you just enjoy, enjoy that bit for a while while I get back to the book. Right, so that was uh, Sebastian Bach playing music, and the book that I was talking about is um, called um, uh, How the One Armed Sister Sweeps a House, and it's a new book by Cherie Jones, and the review is done uh, for the Guardian newspaper by um, Rhiannon Lucy Crosslet. I'm going to read a, a bit of uh, a bit of this uh, our review of the book, kind of introduction. To get a flavor of what the story is in this book. And I'll just read it very quickly, if you'd be, if you'd be patient with me. And she goes, When a novel is described as unflinching, you know you are in for a tough read. Cherie Jones's Debo is set on the island of Barbados, a destination that markets itself as paradise, 
but the, here is anything but. The book opens with a murder and follows a cluster of characters connected to it. A bitch gigolo, a rich tourist's widow, the man who murdered him, the detective on the case. The center of gravity, however, is Lala, a young woman trapped in a violent marriage, as her mother had been before her, had been before her. Over the course of this narrative, things go from bad to worse for Lala. The titular one-armed sister is drawn from a tale she is told by her grandmother, the moral of which is to avoid the temptation of darkness, lest you end up maimed by the monster that lives there. It can also be read as a metaphorical question. How can a woman make a life for herself when her body is under siege? This novel at times feels relentless. It includes murder, rape, sexual assault at gunpoint, incest, child abuse, domestic violence, and the death of a baby. Jones's descriptions are vividly haunting, and she uses setting and landscape to compound the horror. The beach stinks of stewing moss, sagasum, seaweed, and the putrefying guts of beached fishes. The plantation's driveway is fringed by cabbage palms that legends say still hang heavy with the souls of the slaves who have been drenched in cane juice and tied there to be tortured by the stings of red ants. While I not reviewing it, and this is uh, the reviewer Rhiannon, I might have tried to put it down. I say tried because the book is so intensely compelling as well as a lesson in narrative control. You are ensnared in a web with these characters and their trauma. Their claustrophobia becomes your own. It's a startling achievement. There is very little light in this novel. But what shines through instead is a pitiless truth that stays with you long after the story ends. I mean, if that kind of review is not fascinating enough or gripping enough to entice you to go and read this book, and, I'm, and I, have, uh, it's a, I have Joy is watching. Joy is uh, partly from the Caribbean, and I wonder what she makes of uh, a novel set in, in Barbados where such uh, haunting tales have been told. Um, so if you have something to say about that comparison between the, as you say, the paradise of the of Barbados and this kind of story, please share with us. So that is the book that I would just suggest if you have, if you have some downtime, which many of us have because we're on lockdown. So pick up a copy. I've kind of put the, the um, information on the page on Facebook and let everyone in books if you want to have a read but I'll share it again afterwards. So now the question that I put forward today to kind of articulate our palette is this today is the birthday officially of Facebook and this is the Facebook platform that we're using today to connect with each other and the question is has Facebook been good for literature and writing? Um, I would have said, hands up, anyone that wants to contribute and say something about that, uh, so we can kind of have a, um, um, a chat about that um, substance, substantial issue, whether Facebook, uh, since 2004, has had some impact of some kind, good or bad or neutral, uh, to um, uh, literature and writing. So, who's going to go first? Uh, um, encourage Aman to come in from Tanzania and say what he knows, what he feels about uh, Facebook and literature and the connections that we're making. If it's possible, uh, then he will probably might accept to come in or might I'll try somebody else. But in the meantime, uh, let's just kind of uh, just put a thought in mind and think about the ubiquitous nature of uh, Facebook, which is um, kind of um, taking our, over uh, our lives, so to speak. Um, and what I'm waiting to see if uh, my man is going to come in from, uh, from East Africa 
I've got uh, Babs Ajayi uh, from uh, Canada, who uh, is always um, enthusiastic about literature and uh, might be able to get into uh, to have a word or two about this topic of Facebook and literature. So let's see how is um, how is going. Otherwise, I'm going to have to call um, Joy, who is um, who knows a bit about um, the Caribbean. So I'm waiting for Babs. Um, Babs, I'm trying to uh, see if I can um, get you to come and say a few words, but um, you're not able to connect and come on the on the camera. Uh, if you want to um, send a message uh, to me and see what we, what we can do about that. Okay. Okay. Seems like um, the um, the gods of Facebook are not um, relenting in their in their choice of um, connectivity today. Um, but uh, I'll keep uh, the conversation going. Um, yeah, Babs. I know you're here, Babs, but um, you haven't got the uh, uh, I haven't got the facility to bring you on screen. So um, you might have to do something to your um, uh, device so that I can bring you on the camera and we can have a chat and hear what you've got to say. I'm sure we've done it in the past and it won't be rocket science for you to do. After all, you're from Canada. You're the first world. No. You don't need an invitation. I'm sure there's a, there's a setting on, on, your, uh, on your device that you probably activated that prevents prevents um, outsiders from adding you to uh, a conversation. That is probably why you can't be added. So I've got Tissy Lola also, who is with us. Um, I'm not sure what um, she's uh, able to, to say. And I've just had uh, a good will um had come from uh, my friend Ade Adeniji from Lagos and it would be a pleasure to have Ade because Ade is always um unless he's busy doing something some legal stuff I'm sure he'll be very happy to uh join us and have the conversation and the, and the question is we're asking is um are we how has Facebook uh been good or not good to um for literature and writing so uh, perhaps a guy says that uh, Facebook is now the marketplace for art and literature. It would have been much, much more exciting to have him say that to, my, to our faces. Um, but, uh, you know, so I think it is true that um, um, by and large, just like Amazon, uh, Facebook has become an interactive place where ideas flow. There are many uh, platforms, uh, many groups, um, every other, as nearly every um, literary literary agent or uh, uh, publishers or marketers of books uh, or music of uh, creative output have a place on Facebook, which means that um, uh, it created this accessible platform and, and, and a place where ideas uh, can really flow. And of course, the freedom of ideas to flow across the world without any boundaries um, uh, in that um, space and time. Uh, you know, it, it is in a way, it is good for human interaction. And it's also helps in many ways to bridge the gap between uh, societies. So um, there's, not, there's hardly anything that is contemporary. That somebody who is in my grandmother's village in Imomo in Ijebu, 
uh, with a computer, with a laptop, or a phone, cannot find out compared to somebody who's in Boston, Massachusetts. That's what implied. So you have this flat, level playing field to some extent of the getting authentic quality ideas in forms. So um, I agree with um, Babs in that context that um, the Facebook is, is one of the big marketplaces for art and literature. Um, so, um, Adewal Adeniji, you must have something to say. Okay, I, I can't bring Wally on stage, but I'm sure he's got something to say. Can you just put in one or two words? Because I know you're very active in the, uh, in the uh, business of propagating ideas, literary ideas uh, on, 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 on the media and social media. Can you please uh, just have, uh, let's have a comment from you, um, Adewal Adeniji. Um, yes, and Babs Ajayi says that the artist is able to introduce himself and sell himself to the world. And uh, part of that uh, 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 open platform that Facebook offers is because it's an interactive platform where um, a drummer from somewhere um, in Kinshasa who has never left Kinshasa can put his work out to a group of people and interact with them plays drums, talk about his drums. And um, before you know it, this chap is on a plane to Hollywood performing in a film, in a movie. Um, I think one of the, um, so this of course applies to other, other forms of social media, but Facebook has a unique attribute, which is in the interactive nature of its um, engagement, its, inter or its interactive. And therefore um, you as an artist, as a producer, as a poet or a performer can perform in real time to audiences anywhere in the world and um, you can monetize those kind of products even if you are illiterate or semi-literate somewhere in the jungles of, of uh, Myanmar as we uh, mentioned about Myanmar later on today. So uh, what Babs is saying is that um, you know with, with, the, with the evolution of, of Facebook it's become something that offers people across the world access to different parts of, 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 of the world. Um, so uh, Babs again says that uh, the painter can expose his as a world to the world and a global village. So the idea of the global village um, is actually quite, um, it's expressed in a very clear way uh, by the way uh, Facebook designs its interactions with people of with people, creative people, or, or um, I don't know what atavistic or the or the other kind of people, the activists, uh, the Kiva Kiva non, lots of groups of people can congregate there and propagate their own ideas. Um, um, but of course, having mentioned Myanmar, where we learned today that uh, Facebook has been banned, effectively banned in Myanmar, as a way of the new military government of suppressing of controlling information, uh, interaction between people in Myanmar uh, for subversive purposes to keep the country stable until the 7th of February, as they say. So there is that um, idea of, of the fertilization of ideas around the world. I suppose it's not new because um, uh, in the past world, in the communist era in the Soviet Union, uh, you had the underground, um, underground platforms for, um, I think the best example is Alexander Solzhenitsyn, whose um, eponymous work, the Gulag Archipelago, was had to be smuggled out of um, Russia in order for it to be published in New York. So um, nowadays it is not possible, very difficult, to prevent a subversive, uh, 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 an activist or saboteur or rebel in a country from sharing the ideas um, either in writing or in physical form by talking to groups of people from uh, anywhere. So as long as people got a telephone, uh, their laptop, computer, they can propagate the ideas, uh, write books, they can share with anybody they want. So that is the, double, the, 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 the duality of Facebook as uh, a platform that it, that liberates in some way. But also the flip side is that that idea of liberation is also 
considered um, a threat in some parts of the world. So I thought I'll get, um, um, okay, right, I've got um, Kike, my very good sister Kike. Happy birthday again in arrears. Uh, just to let you know that the cake was really very nice and satisfying. Thank you very much. So what Kike is saying is that uh, Facebook groups allow you to create a group of engaged fans who are interested in, in you and your books and um, turn into a network of friends, a great way to connect to readers. And that is actually quite, quite fabulous because um, uh, one, of the, one of the things that you find on Facebook, you have the idea of groups um, and pages and things like that, so that um, an individual, a creative person, a, you know, writer, or a performer, uh, can um, you know, create a hub where he or she can interact with uh, people of like minds and um, create genuine interest in the work that they produce. So, um, you know, and that is almost tactile engagement. So that, um, you know, let's say um, um, Jennifer Lopez, one of my favorite, um, uh, or J-Lo, uh, writes a book about something that interests me. I, I don't have to go and, to and meet J-Lo in person. If she opens up a page to do something, and it's like we're almost there with her, you know, in, in the room, interacting with her, talking about her books or about the music. Is that, it's almost like a, like a clan. You create your own clan. And that is one way in which uh, um, the, this Facebook, over its evolution up to now, has been able to build that platform for people for creative um, output. Of course, um, uh, it has different kinds of, um, um, also have the pros and cons. So it also means that um, uh, you get feedback very quickly. So uh, many publishers or produce producers of creative work, they use this kind of platform to test things out, to see how things land with people and get instant feedback. Uh, they can um, uh, uh, not just hear what you're saying, they can watch what you, uh, your body language, they can go get your twitches and your fingers and your body movements into algorithms to kind of prepare uh, how things are going to land and to fine tune products and services, which in some way could say, oh, that's pretty alarming. But you can just say, well, that's the way it is. So um, KK says it's also, it also makes it easy that the Facebook interaction uh, makes it easy to find like-minded people too. Um, and again, it goes without saying, that Facebook is basically a marketing platform, it's a, it's a, it's a marketing uh, consumer uh, use kind of um, thing, we call it. And it, a, lot, a lot of the stuff that, that runs it is all about human psychology and um, that kind of um, mind um, influencing kind of thing. So um, you can, it, it allows you to, uh, to aggregate towards people of some kind. And of course, why um, Facebook has come under a lot of pressure to um, to actually censor uh, what uh, people are doing. So you you you, you like my them people, yeah, the good people if we call them that. But the people who are not quite good, uh, sometimes people uh, have their own opinions as to what is good and what is not good. But I think that is. Uh, part of what uh, we're trying to get up to in looking at the impact of Facebook on the world of writing and creativity as a whole. So um, it seems like people are being uh, shy or reticent to come and um, uh, say something online on screen to me so they just um um perpetuating my, my my feeling of loneliness and i thought as Kiki said it's supposed to be a uh, uh, kind of clannish uh, kind of group thing where we, we give you up but it's fine i'm really grateful that i've had that kind of uh, kind of feedback on what facebook has meant uh to um, to everyone so amani Amani, uh, great guy, 
thank you very much. Amani says that uh, Facebook is a place where you can connect with friends and family from all around the world and communicate, share photos and other information. So uh, we're just taking it beyond just the idea of writing books or reading books or promoting what you've written. Um, um, but I think, you know, <clears throat> what Amani is trying to say is that um, while you can create even small groups and try to target what, what you want to promote, <clears throat> it's also the truth that on a much broader scale, Facebook has broken down barriers. Um, um, even though, of course, we, we do have uh, other platforms where you can interact with Skype and um, some other platforms, and most recently Zoom, I think the, the, the difference with, with Facebook is that um, it's, 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 it's the social media, you know, it is the social media, the socializing media, where um, the basic intent is to connect people and to <clears throat> create for the owners of Facebook, a big worldwide marketplace of ideas of products and services, which they can um, somehow put together to create something for the world to enjoy or to just um, stare and look. So, um, so you know, last time I saw Amani was uh, about um, I think six years ago or thereabouts. But um, whenever I, I'm, I'm with him, I'm connected with him on Facebook, messaging messages. I can see the passage. I can see the family celebrations in Tanzania. I can see what he is getting on with uh, in that kind of. Um, pseudo public space. So, and that is the extent of which you can interact. So, um, it's also the point about uh, the freedom with which people actually use this, the uh, Facebook. Because um, some people say, some people live their life on Facebook. Um, yeah, if you're a, a, a promoter of your work, or your art, or what you do, um, and you think Facebook is a way of getting your content out, then of course you wouldn't be inhibited by any criticism that you're living your life on Facebook. So um, it just means that you have more people to connect with. So that um, is uh, another perspective I've got about Facebook. And um, one other thing that we got to do, I was trying to uh, get my page that I set up for, for today out, but I've done something really silly. I have closed the page by mistake and I can't recover uh, uh, it's back on my browser. But I think the main point I wanted to make about today was to kind of for us to kind of uh, reflect on uh, this medium we're using, the Facebook, uh, and having the opportunity to connect with, connect with ourselves around the world, to share ideas and to celebrate our lives as we go in, week in, week out. Um, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, it's subjective. But I think that for many people around the world who have had to, who have been disconnected to their families due to lockdown, almost in their parents or their loved ones or siblings for years, um, and most other platforms, Facebook does provide, fill the gap uh, to allow people to uh, have that interaction and for people who are creative, people who are trying to um, uh, derive some pleasure from what they do and to, um, you know, sell things to other people on the marketplace, wherever there, it's an opportunity to connect with people around the world who might need what you have to offer. Um, of course, self-restraint is always a good thing. So amongst, amidst all the um, uh, problems that the issues raise about privacy, invasion, and so on. So, uh, everyone has got to make a judgment about where that sits with you. But uh, it will be very uh, unsavory to condemn the platform entirely. But again, you should not trust it entirely in that way. You need to manage your uh, interaction with it. So on that note, I think we we'll love to um, call it a day. I was going looking forward to uh, uh, some really hard words, heavy words from uh, Babs or perhaps um, Dr. Tukoya, but I think we've kind of got a bit of the gist about that. So before I go, I'm just going to, um, again, remind you that if you're looking for a book 
that uh, you want to read uh, just uh, for your amusement, um, like in that book, uh, the novel from Barbados, uh, says in Barbados, How the One Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Cherie Jones, um, a harrowing devil novel, uh, describes the claustrophobic story of murder, abuse, and a violent marriage on the island of Barbados. It is pitiless, but intensely compelling. So I'm sure that um, you will find it uh, good to do. Oh, I've got Dr. Otokoya now. I'm sure he was really doing some uh, magical stuff. Um, it would be interesting for you to hear his view because he's got very, a very strong opinion about uh, uh, things like interface business, academia, and literature and writings. Let's see if we can get something from him before, uh, before, we, before we leave. It would be a pleasure to really have him give us um, uh, his view, especially as, um, uh, especially as um, he's had as an academic, senior academic, he must uh, be, he must have, um, I'm sure he's done some studies about social media and um, stuff around how um, you can use the social media as a tool in the creative industry. And he's told me that he's already had a, a good, good fun on this show today. So I'm going to just let him be and not uh, try and uh, get him on again because I'm sure he's quite busy uh, with some other stuff. Um, so um, get that uh, if you can. How the One Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Cherie Jones. And uh, I'll put the review up, the review of the book. Um, the review of the book, I'll put it on the page so you can read and see if it, can try, if it interests you. So Amani, thank you very much, Amani, for your comments and I uh, appreciate your, uh, your time uh, from uh, the um, beautiful uh, country of Tanzania. Thanks for the memories. Um, so I, um, I do doodle around sometimes with some, um, with, with, uh, with Garage Band, which is a software on, um, uh, on my Apple MacBook. And I try to um, play around with some musical compositions. So rather than having somebody else's music play out, play us out on the um, uh, on the on the um... okay. So well, we have the pleasure uh, before we go. Before I put in my composition music, the music composition, I um, think we have the pleasure of having Dr. Otukoya. Is he is keen to have his yeah. say? So let us see what you can yes. say. Yes, Doctor Otukoya. Hi, how are you? Sorry. Very much for. Hey. Yes. How are you? I'm fine. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> yeah. The story of my life. Yes, yes, yes. So we were talking about um, uh, the creative process, the creative industry, and today is the anniversary or the best day. I think is the 15th birthday of Facebook. Yes. So I just thought, let's ask the question. Has Facebook been good for literature and writing? We've had a lot of comments. Can you just give us your own uh, perspective on that question? Oh, I think it has been really wonderful, especially for small writers and individuals that in the past will probably not have had the opportunity. Um, I, I'm trying to remember the lady that wrote a book. Um, I think she wrote three books and it was only shared amongst our friends. And suddenly it continued to spiral and it became a massive bestseller. So as a result of people sharing um, our story, everybody else continued. And um, so there have been several instances, especially for very small, um, for very small, or just ordinary individuals who otherwise might not have been published. So I, I think it's a really good, good thing. Yes. I still think I remember that story about the uh, this uh, book that went viral. And I think through our conversation earlier on, I didn't mention the idea of this sharing. Yes. You know, can you just tell us more about sharing? Okay, I think um, somebody else mentioned earlier on as well about the fact that if you create a group, by creating a group, you have the opportunity for people to individually test your ideas, test part of your books as well, especially mm -hmm. if you have a storyline. And people share that and said, oh, yes, this is a wonderful thing to do. And you can then continue, especially as, as a novelist. Sometimes they're very, um, it's, it's a very lonely 
um, thing to do because you're writing, not sure whether anybody's going to read. But if you try it one or two chapters and people like it, then you can continue because it's an encouragement. So Facebook has been a wonderful, a wonderful. Um, it's giving people a lot of opportunities to actually publish outside of the publishing house, and I think that's giving people a, a good run for their a good run for their money. Yes, it's a quite, quite an interesting point you made. And uh, I wanted to kind of uh, look in terms of uh, academia. You know, you've been a senior uh, academia, you run the MBA program at the University of Northampton. How has Facebook been of academic value in terms of the work that you do with uh, Yeah, no, actually, um, students, more, more time than not, they're ahead of us in terms of creating groups and in creating um, um, on sharing ideas as well. So what I find is I get invited by some of the students to say, can you join this group? And, and I end up joining. And I could see actually the opportunity for them to exchange ideas. And, um, and especially when it comes to academic life, which means, you know, people have the opportunity to read widely as well. So right now it's, um, and the universities use it as well to publish um, information to, to our students and attract new students as well. So really been good for us. Okay. All right. And I think that's a fabulous kind of um, summary. I mean, because in, 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 it, it, it has its traction and gravitas, gravitas in all walks yes. of life. And it's just uh, uh, being of more of value. And I think I made a point about um, a village student somewhere in our village in the Jabu, somewhere yes. in the States in Nigeria, who can pick up the Facebook and join a group of uh, physics students in Massachusetts. Absolutely. And, yeah, absolutely. And, um, and because it's a non threatening social group, um, there's more acceptance rather than having a formal academic group portal with, you know, click, yeah. click that, register. Yeah. So the, the access to, to knowledge across the world beyond boundaries is quite um, uh, something commendable in that kind of social form, format. Absolutely, I agree. I agree with you. And and to be honest, that's one of the. If my mother at eighty something, while she was alive, joined Facebook and was sharing knowledge and some of our old books with some of our wow. old students, amazing, um, incredible. So amazing. yeah, so it's really a wonderful opportunity to join. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the chance actually wow. to be on as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Tukoya. And um, I wish that um, we uh, all make the best use of, uh, of Facebook and other media responsibly and be attuned to whatever risks that are there. Absolutely. But um, ultimately, we must say that um, it's, been, it's a big effort to, uh, in, in the world we live in now, the world without boundaries, where uh, people can share ideas and collaborate in a social setting. Uh, non-threatening environment and uh, self-regulation, I think, is something well commendable. And um, I want to thank you again, and I look forward to uh, seeing you on our uh, show uh, discussing something of continued interest. Absolutely, thank it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So, as I was saying, um, I'm now going to. Um, uh, sing goes out on on a composition I'm working on on Garrick Band because of lockdown. I just need to uh, kind of uh, get myself busy. So this is a small composition I've been playing with on Garrick Band uh, for a few days now, and I hope um, I get feedback on it. I'm a trained musician, a composer, but uh, it's just gadgetry. Thank you very much.
So that's it this weekend. So thank you very much, guys. And thank you. Seeing you again. And this yes, this wonderful. Page and, uh, about the uh, one armed woman who is sweeping the rooms. Uh, it's much more than that. Thank you very much and stay blessed. Stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye thank then. you very much.